Okay, the first game we're going to go through here is a traditional game of stuck in the mud. However, this one's got a bit of a rugby league twist. We like to call it Kiwi stuck in the mud. So you've got three groups out there. We've got taggers, we've got runners, and we've got carriers. So the runners are going to run around, basically. If they get tagged by the taggers, they're stuck in the mud. They have to stand still. The carriers of the football will then pass them the football for them to do a traditional play the ball. So put the ball on the ground and roll it back with your foot. Once you've done that, the carrier can pick up the ball again and you're free. The game carries on until everyone's stuck in the mud. This is a traditional peg evasion game. So basically, get any uh, closed pegs from home off the line and you get, get each kid to put two pegs on their shorts as you can see out there. Then set up a large square area. Your size will depend on the number of kids you have. And you basically get the kids to run around and within a prescribed time, they have to try and pull off each other's pegs. There's several variations. You can use colours with pegs if you want and have teams. And at the end of it, count up with your teams who had the most pegs pulled off each other's shorts. This game's called Truck and Trailers. First of all, get your players to partner up with someone equal ability as themselves. Then set up a grid. The size will depend on the number of players you have. Your partners then decide which one's going to be the truck and which one's going to be the trailer. On the coach's whistle, the truck runs around inside the big grid and the trailer has to follow him and try and stay within arm's length. The game usually goes for about 10 to 15 seconds. At that stage, your players can swap roles. This game is called 10 passes. First of all, split your group up into two even teams and set up a grid. Size will depend on the number of players that you have. Give one team the ball. The aim of them, that team is to try and do 10 consecutive passes without the other team intercepting or knocking the ball down. If they manage to get 10 consecutive passes, give them a try or one point. Then they can then start again. If the ball is knocked down or intercepted, the other team gets the ball and it's their turn to try and get 10 consecutive passes. The game carries on until a certain amount of tries has been scored by either one of the teams. This game is called Stuck in a Box. This game only involves five players. To ensure all your players are active, you want to set up several different stations of these drills. One drill or station involves a three by three meter square. On each one of the corners, you set up one player. The fifth player is in the middle of the box and he is the player that is stuck in the box. The four players have to then pass the ball between themselves while the man stuck in the box tries to intercept or knock down the pass. A good idea is to give each player a turn at being stuck in the box over a prescribed time and see who can get the most intercepts or knock down the ball the most. This game is called Piggy in the Middle. It only involves three players, so again, you need to set up several drills or several stations to ensure all your players are active. Of those three players, two of them become pairs and one becomes the piggy in the middle. Put them inside a three meter by three meter square drill. The players then pass the ball between themselves while the piggy in the middle tries to knock down the ball or intercept the ball. Make sure you give all players a turn at being piggy in the middle. This game is called Rob the Nest. Split your group up into four equal teams and give that team a name. We then set up a drill around seven meters by seven meters squared. Each corner has a base or a nest. In the middle of the square, you set up another nest in the middle where all the balls are placed to start the game. A good number of footballs is usually six or seven. On the coach's whistle, the first player from each team runs out and grabs a ball from the middle and takes it back to their nest. They then tag the next player in their team. That player has the option to either go and steal a ball from the middle or steal a ball from another, another team's nest and return it back to their nest. They then tag the next player and so on and so on. The game is over when one team 
has three balls in their nest at the same time. There's a few variations with this game, so as a coach you can be flexible. Instead of carrying the ball back to your base, the players can run and have to pass it back to their nest. Or they can kick it back to their nest. And remember, you don't have to use footy balls. You can use tennis balls, soccer balls, even a pair of socks if you want. This game is called snake bite. Set up a large square. Again, size will depend on the number of players you have. Put all players inside the square and nominate two players to be the snakes. On the coach's whistle, the snakes run around and try and touch all the other players. Once you've been touched, you have to join hands with the person that touched you to make the snake longer. If the snake breaks at any time, it is not allowed to touch anybody until the snake reforms. Last person to not be tagged is the winner. These next development games are aimed at mini players, which are under sixes through to under nines. We're going to start off with the Snoop touchdown game. Set up a grid about five metres wide by seven metres long. Again, it will depend on the number of players you have. If you have several players at training, make sure you set up one, more than one grid. For each grid, split your team into two teams and line them up on the edge of the grid. Give each player a number from one through to however many players you have in each team. On the coach's whistle, he will call out a number. The, the corresponding number from each team run up around the end of their group, pick up one of the two balls that you've placed in the middle, and they run to the end and score a try. You can then add further developments, as in calling two numbers, and two players run around the end of the group, pick up the ball, and pass to their teammate who scores a try. As the kids progress, you can even add in grubber or chip kicks. This game is called Traffic Lights. It is a simple game based on the traffic light commands of stop and go. Set up a grid around 20 metres long and approximately 10 metres wide. The coach stands at the end of the grid. All players go to the opposite end and are given a football. If you don't have enough footballs, you can substitute them with anything such as tennis balls or socks. On the coach's command, he will call go. All players have to try and reach the end of the grid first. But when the coach calls stop, all players have to stop immediately. Those that don't stop straight away will be sent back to the end of the grid. The winner or winners are the players that can reach the coach or the traffic cop first. This game is called Numbers. Set up a large area and have all your players running freely in the area. At any stage, the coach will call out a number. Whatever number he calls, the players have to try and get into the groups of that size. For example, if the coach says four, all players need to try and get into groups of four first. This game is called L Plates and is particularly designed for the real young mini kids. Set up a large square and within that square have several different stations set out randomly. For example, a yellow cone, red cone, a shoe, or a tackle pad. Ask all players to run around in the grid carrying the ball in two hands. At any stage the coach will call out a station, i.e. yellow cone. All players must make it to a yellow cone. He then might call out tackle pad and players have to run around and try and find a tackle pad. You can extend this drill by having the players skip, sprint, jog, walk, or even roll around before you call out a station. These development games are specifically designed for mod players, which are under 10s through to under 12s. And we're gonna start off with a simple grip game. Set up a large square for all your players to be inside. Where possible, give every player a football. It doesn't have to be a football though, it can be any type of ball, as long as your players can hold it with two hands. On the coach's whistle, the players run around and try and knock each other's ball out of their hands. The last man standing is the winner. A variation could be, when you knock another player's ball out of his hands, you receive a point. At the end of a prescribed time, the player with the most points is the winner. This game is called League Netball. 
Set up a rectangle area, much like a netball court, and split your group into two even teams. Players basically play a game of netball, same rules as netball, except at each end there is a cut-off area or a shooting area that no one from either team is allowed to go into. Players pass the ball between themselves, trying to get to the far end of the court. When they get in shooting range, they have to pass the ball into the shooting area and try and knock over one of three cones set up. If they knock over a cone, the ball goes to the other team and they carry on. The game is finished when one team has knocked over all three cones. This game is called Premier League. It is much like a game of soccer, however players, instead of kicking the ball, can pass it or grab it to each other in their team. You score a goal by either passing or grabbing the ball through the goal at the opposite end. Each team can have a goalie protecting their goal. A changeover occurs if any drop ball or two-handed touch is made. Players can run with the ball freely if they wish. This game is called Rugby League Gridiron. It is much like Rugby League Netball, however, instead of a shooting area at each end of the field, we now have an in-goal area. Players pass the ball between themselves like Rugby League Netball, however, when they get to the far end, they need to pass the ball to an attacking team member in the in-goal in area. If, this, if the attacking player in the in-goal area successfully catches the ball, they receive a point. This game is called Defend Your Line. Set up a large area and have one team set up on the goal line or try line, the other team spread out to receive a kickoff. The coach then kicks the ball into the grid for the attacking team to catch and regather. They then have six tackles to try and score over the try line while the defending team has to defend their line. We're now going to do some skill development drills. The first one is a simple pole relay. It's a basic relay race with players zigzagging through poles and passing the ball off at the far end. Remember if you have several players at training, ensure you set up several different drills so everyone is active. This is a simple passing relay, often called V passing drill. Set up two lines in a V formation. On the coach's whistle, the first player runs forward and forms a play the ball. One player follows him into the dummy half position. The team then forms four consecutive passes to the winger who scores in the corner. The first team to score are the winners. When teaching young mini mod kids how to tackle, there's a few key things to remember. Number one, start them on the ground. It takes away the confrontation factor. Number two is the head placement. You want to make sure your players' heads are right out of the way. And number three is, we want to teach our young players a front-on low tackle, using the player's momentum to fall backwards, rather than hitting and driving and forcing the ball carrier to fall backwards and slam his head onto the ground. So we're going to go through a simple three-step process here to teach the front-on low tackle. So number one is, hands up, head to the side, touch the hips. Beautiful, good stuff. <laughs> up you get, mate, don't worry about it. Number two, hands up, head to the side, cheek to cheek, bear hug. Beautiful. And the last one is we're going to use his momentum to fall backwards. So come up to me. Beautiful. Hands up. Same thing. Use his momentum. Fall backwards. Beautiful. Good tackle. 